Researchers evaluating LLMs is kind of like an English teacher marking your essay. A 90 is obviously a 90, a 60 is obviously a 60, but if you squint as hard comprehending why you got a 94 and not a 95, it barely makes any difference that maybe your teacher just doesn't love you. Subjectivity aside, differentiating a 94 and a 95 for LLMs are really important because companies' egos are on the line. But it gets even more difficult because there are so many different aspects that you can evaluate the performance of when given a piece of generated text. It gets even worse when you want to quantify natural language for numerical metrics. That's why there exist hundreds of benchmarks just for us to figure out which AI model is superior to the other. So today, you will learn about the current 7 most popular benchmarks used to evaluate text-based large language models, which are also used for ranking text models on leaderboards like OpenLLM or Chatbot Arena. Keep in mind that this is a different set of benchmarks when evaluating multimodal LLMs and AI chatbots. Starting with massive multitask language understanding. As its name suggests, it is a multi-choice benchmark that tests on a huge variety of tasks on different knowledge levels, ranging from STEM to humanities and being a completely hand-collected dataset with around 15k questions. How MMLU scores is that it averages a model's performance per category and then averages again for a final score. Usually the text model can have a few shots aka demonstrations to adapt to the question's topic or format, so the model would know it needs to output one answer from multi choice question within a specific topic. But there isn't a limited amount of shots for MMLU, and to be more precise, there isn't really a shot limit on any existing benchmarks either. Up next, we have ARC, short for AI2 Reasoning Challenge. I really want to say it's because of Allen Institute, but it's just Allen Institute for AI, so AI2 or AI squared. The benchmark composed of an easy set and a challenge set. Both have difficulty levels at around 3 to 9th grade, and it's a hand collected multi-choice dataset of 8k questions from standardized tests. The challenge set is the one that requires reasoning, hence the name ARC, and it mainly focuses on scientific reasoning and understanding. Hella swag is probably the most unexpected name for an AI benchmark, and that usually happens when the research paper goes like harder endings, longer context, and low shot activities for situations with adversarial generations. But it's a pretty banger name though. This benchmark works by presenting scenarios with multi-choice endings, where models must choose the most plausible continuation out of four sentences, and the data is usually a text describing some actions in a video. Since there is only one right answer, all three of the wrong answers are generated with a technique called adversarial filtering. So the wrong answers make absolutely no sense in which we humans can answer the entire dataset with around 95% accuracy. For contrast, the GPT-4 can now answer it with 95% accuracy and POM2 at 87%. Next up, we have Winograde, which is inspired by Winograde grad schema challenge. It is also a common sense reasoning benchmark that consists of 44k fill in the blank problems but with binary options only. The question goes like, the doctor diagnosed Justin with bipolar and Robert with anxiety. Blank had terrible nerves recently, and the AI chooses between Justin and Robert. While it is 50-50 chance to get the right answer, it is still a pretty robust benchmark since it has at least 5 times more data than other benchmarks. Similarly, truthful QA checks if the AI model has a misconception about certain facts. Like, if you ask the AI model if the Earth is flat, it might say yes thanks to the training data, which is the internet. So this benchmark kind of just makes sure AI models doesn't generate unhinged conspiracy theories as answers to the users. The benchmark is composed of around 800 misleading questions, and the model would have to choose the right answer and not imitate bad human text. Grade School Math 8K is a dataset of 8.5K basic math problems that require multi-step reasoning, and each takes around two to eight steps to solve. So instead of doing math numerically, the AI has to answer questions completely in natural language, which is pretty good since it'll test the model's logic and mathematical capabilities at the same time. However, there might be a problem that the reasoning steps are incorrect and it still generates the right final answer, which might mean the model memorized the answer, but the chance is pretty low if the data is not in the original training data. And for the last one, Empty Bench is a benchmark that introduced the idea of LLM as a judge and prove the practicality of using GPT-4 to replace humans in evaluating conversational and instruction following abilities, since humans are way slower of course. It has 8 primary categories of user prompts with 10 multi-turn questions for each category, so 160 questions in total. This is more of a fine-tuning and chatbot type of benchmark rather than a pure capability test benchmark, so empty bench is only used for chatbot arena's leaderboard to calculate a model's ELO, while the other benchmarks are used in the open 
open LLM leaderboard with ranks available and average scores of all benchmarks or be sorted individually by each. And yeah, that's it for today. Let me know down in comments if there are still any other benchmarks that you want me to explain in a video. And if you really like AI leaderboards, check out this fun little website I made which tracks the most visited AI related websites daily. There is also another leaderboard for trending websites, which is ranked by changes in daily traffic. It is available in both English, Japanese, and Chinese. It might be a bit buggy since we are still developing it, but let me know if you have any suggestions or if I missed any websites on Discord. Thank you so much for watching. A big shout out to Andrew Laschelius, Chris Ledoux, Alex J, Alex Maurice, Miguelim, Deegan, Fifal, and many others that support me through Patreon or YouTube. Follow my Twitter if you haven't, and I'll see you in the next one.